another dramatic comeback from Manchester United saw them set a new club record of 8 consecutive away wins in the league. On the whiteboard I will discuss the return of the diamond formation, United's high press and the impact that Vanny had on the game. First, let's look at the stats. With 6 big chances created and 10 shots inside the box, maybe show United could have won the game more comfortably. But the fact they scored 3 goals and only won the game in stoppage time points towards bigger issues than the finishing. Let's move on to the whiteboard. When I saw that Oli reverted back to the flawed and failed diamond formation, my heart sunk. But in the early stages of the game, United imposed their formation and tactics onto Southampton. Manchester United's narrow midfield four outnumbered Southampton's two-man midfield within their 4-4-2 formation. Add to that United's aggressive high press. United's midfield swarmed all over Warhouse and Romeo. United pinned Southampton back in their own half and they struggled to play out. From this screenshot, you can see how United pushed right up the pitch and compressed the midfield area, leaving Walker Peters in this instance with hardly any passing options. However, because United don't always play with a high press, they are not particularly well versed in executing it and it went from causing Southampton problems to being United's Achilles heel. From this screenshot, the ball is played up to Adams. Maguire presses him in Southampton's half and forces Adams to play the ball backwards back into United's press. The ball goes back to Armstrong, who is then pressed by Van der Beek, forcing Armstrong to play another backwards pass to Walker Peters. As Walker Peters is about to play the ball forward, three of United's midfield diamond are in the picture, engaging with Southampton's midfield. From here, it looks like Walker Peters has nowhere to go. But the first mistake in United's press has happened. Rashford doesn't work hard enough to get across to Walker Peters and allows him time to get his head up and play a forward pass. If a high press and high line is used, you cannot allow the opposition players time to get their head up to pick a forward pass. Walker Peters forward pass finds Adams in acres of space in the middle of the park. For some reason, Maguire has dropped off him and now all four of United's diamonds are behind the ball. The ball out to Gineppo from Adams leaves not only all of United's midfield behind the ball, but also two of United's back four, and Southampton are two on two, 40 yards from goal, and Southampton nearly get the third goal from this situation. To go from United having Southampton pinned back in their own half, to two passes later, Southampton having a two on two, shows that this is a tactic that was not well drilled. Moving on to the reasons why I think the diamond formation doesn't work for United. In my opinion, United don't have a six good enough to patrol or control this area on their own. All of United's options for the six position need another player alongside them to properly protect the back four. For me, the spaces between the positions within the diamond are too big. It isolates the individuals within the midfield formation and prevents United's midfield from backing each other up and hunting impact. And finally, it creates too many lines within United's formation, making it difficult to control the spaces between the respective lines because they are so stretched. From the screenshot, there is too much space between the lines. Ginepro could easily pop a pass into Walcott and then he is one-on-one -on -one with Lindelof, who he is much quicker than. Matic is too far away from Fred, who is isolated in a one-on-one -on -one with Ginepro. So if he does Fred, Matic can't back Fred up. And there's also too much space between Fernandes and Van der Beek and Fred and Matic. In this screenshot, the diamond is perfectly formed, but United look wide open. Moving on to the next phase of the play, Ginepro goes past Fred, Matic can't make the ground up to back him up, and then Fred hacks Ginepro down before he gets into the box. This was the free kick Ward Prowse scored from. Now moving on to the major positive to come out of the game, Cavani, the master marksman with two goals and one assist, he turned the game around for United. Focusing on Cavani's movement, in this shot he has pulled onto the blind side of Bartram who was looking at wan -Bazaka. The ball gets switched out to wan -Bazaka, and Cavani moves back into the centre of the box. He then moves into the box for the delivery from wan -Bazaka, but he doesn't go all the way with Vestergaard. He leaves space between him and Vestergaard so he can get the run on him from the delivery. The ball comes in and Cavani towers over Vestergaard and just misses with the header. Going to Cavani's first goal, at the point the ball comes in from the corner, he is way beyond the near post. 
when the ball goes out to the edge of the box, again you can see Cavani is way outside the width of the goals and sandwiched between three Southampton players. At the point he heads the ball in, look at where he has come from to attack that space and in the process has moved past three United players to get into that position. This is the graphic I used in my analysis of the West Brom game to highlight why Cavani should be in the team. When Cavani came on against West Brom, he showed Martial and Rashford how a proper marksman moves. Whichever side of the pitch the ball is on, Cavani gets on the blind side of the defender who is marking him and then makes runs across the defender into the spaces in behind the defensive line. Moving on to Cavani's second goal, he is pulled onto the blind side of Vestergaard but Vestergaard is looking over his shoulder at Cavani in this shot. In the next phase of the play, it's the start of the end for Vestergaard. He has taken his eye off Cavani and is now looking at the ball. Cavani is winding up his run to the near post. As the ball is played in, Cavani attacks the space on the near post. Vestergaard is nowhere near him and Cavani scores a great header. His constant movement gives the United midfield a target to aim for and causes opposition defenders all sorts of problems. What usually saves defenders is when the ball is not played to Cavani rather than them being able to stop him. What Cavani has demonstrated is there is a difference between being able to score goals and being a goal scorer. The devil's verdict is Oli has got pats on the back for changing things at half time but it was his change of formation, change of tactics and dropping Cavani that put United in that position. I'm not giving Oli credit for anything that happened in the second half because at 2-0 down the game is lost anyway so you chuck everything at it and it was the individual ability of Fernandes and Cavani that won the game for United. If Oli had gone with the same team apart from Martial and formation he played against Istanbul in midweek, United would have won the game with ease. Let me know in the comments what you thought of my analysis and how you thought the game went. And as always, please like, subscribe and share. If you have already subscribed to help the channel grow, if you know other United fans, please let them know about the channel and remember to hit the like button. I'll see you in the next video.